Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely evening. So yesterday I did a video on this company, Raleigh, that makes bicycles and electric bicycles, and they put up a notice on their site that said, if you want to replace the battery in this or get the battery serviced on their knowledge base, listen, by the time you actually need to replace the battery, you're going to want to buy a new one and upgrade anyway. So yeah, like, don't even worry about that. And that is something that was not well received by many members of my audience that do not believe in just, in just throwing a product away because the battery is dead. Most of us tend to think if you buy something for one or two or $3,000 and the battery dies, you replace the battery. You don't throw away the device. We're not all just made of money. Money doesn't grow on trees unless you are a member of a central bank. So the problem with this approach is that it wasn't well received by a lot of customers and a lot of people that, that, that saw it. And so many of you pointed out that as of today, they have changed it. And now instead of saying, you know, or yeah, you're going to want to upgrade to another one, they changed it to if you have an issue, reach out to a bike mechanic and ask them for your options, which in my opinion is honestly, that, that sounds, that doesn't sound like a change. That sounds like a social media manager got woken up at three in the morning uh, because of people screaming on Twitter and they just came up with a better way to say what was there. I don't know if this actually changed anything. And you have to keep in mind that we do live in a world now where sometimes a battery or a piece will be serialized to a motor controller. So even if you replace it with the exact same battery, simply because it lacks the same serial number, it may not work. You have companies like Future Motion with the One Wheel GT that actually think that if you unplug the battery and then plug that same battery with that same serial number back in, that the device should brick itself and you should have to send it back to the manufacturer to have that fixed. That that's okay. We live in a time where many companies think that this is acceptable behavior and are taking part in this behavior. So it's a completely reasonable question for you as the consumer to have, which is when something goes wrong with my battery, what do we do? And saying, well, speak to a mechanic about it, honestly doesn't answer the question. It doesn't answer the question as to whether or not the batteries in their product are serialized in a manner that is easy for you to tell before you purchase it. It doesn't answer the question as to whether or not the device will brick itself when you unplug the battery before you purchase it, which is again, a really good question to ask because companies are actually doing this. It doesn't answer the question as to whether or not they are selling replacement batteries to these mechanics. They're literally saying, if you have a problem with the battery, ask a mechanic. Like again, there's no link to where to buy a replacement. There's no documentation on whether or not it is serialized, meaning even if you do buy an identical replacement, it will work without being programmed. It doesn't say whether it will brick anything, and these are all valid concerns to have. And at the end of the day, I'm less interested in us being at a point where you know a bunch of people being aggravated at something being unfixable leads to a social media manager making an edit to a paragraph on a website saying, ask your technician. And I'm more interested in a world where companies just don't see fit to stop you from replacing the battery on something you paid thousands of dollars for. And I also would prefer to live in a world where rather than it just being company doesn't want you to replace a battery, there's consumer backlash, and then they edit the text in their website without actually changing their policy, that they just simply have a policy that is repair friendly from the very start. And even if that's a little too idealistic, that when they do edit their website, they actually give you some useful information. They actually tell you what the policy is regarding the battery on the device. Because, you know, many people will say, well, just don't buy devices from these companies. And I completely understand where they're coming from. But how are you supposed to know which companies produce these types of products when they use this type of vague language and really don't give you much of an idea? You know, when I look at One Wheel's website, I don't see anywhere where it's obvious for me to tell as a consumer that you've created a product where if I unplug the battery and plug it back in, I've now permanently bricked it and need to give you large amounts of money and ship it back to your one service center in the world. It doesn't really make it obvious. But that's my dream. My dream is not a world where a device will, be, will have their product page mildly edited by a social media manager as a result of backlash. My dream is living in a world where the product is produced in a manner that is repair friendly to begin with. And I don't know if I'm going to be successful on this journey. I don't know if I'm going to get anywhere. I don't know if we're going to see any progress in my lifetime. But one thing I can say is that I am humbled, honored, and happy to be along for the ride on this journey with all of you. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for, 
honestly, whatever the hell you did that got them to the point where they said, we got to edit this website and it needs to happen now. Uh, and thank you very much for all of the work that you've done. In the state of Missouri, we have an agriculture only bill, agricultural only right to repair bill, and it actually moved out of committee. A lot of the times these bills die in committee. This one moved out of committee. Uh, the reason that this type of bill was able to move out of committee is because of the dedicated work of, and honestly, just the, the thoughts and well wishes and advocacy that all of you have been doing. And Ryan Roden has been doing great work for us in Missouri as well. But admittedly, his work would not be possible without the, the backing, the donations, the people being willing to have difficult conversations with their friends, their family members, and their coworkers, and explain to them why it is we are moving towards a world where we don't own anything anymore. And your willingness to engage in those conversations, your willingness to educate the people around you, your willingness to do everything you can to avoid a world where you own nothing and are happy is why we are making the incremental steps that we are. And again, even if we wind up failing entirely, I will be able to say that I genuinely enjoyed being able to have you all along for the ride. Thank you very much for being there. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.